So before we jump into the video, I want to take a second to rep our sponsors, Hyde Motor Works. Go ahead and check them out over at HydeMotorWorks.com. It's where I've gotten all my kits and all of my supercharger accessories from. They are the sponsor of this car, and they help out the channel. They're offering a discount code for you guys, my viewers. If you punch in ORI22 at checkout, it's going to give you a 15% discount on your order, which is huge, guys. And it's also going to allow just a little bit of kickback to the channel so we can push forward, make some more projects, maybe go with a larger supercharger in the future, make some more power. And I uh, can't say enough about the project. They've been great to work with. They've hooked me up with everything that we've needed. Uh, little tweaks here back and forth. And hopefully we can get everything dialed in for you guys. Get your kits ordered. Get it strapped on your four or six cylinder BMW. And start making some real progressive linear power. Alright guys, we're back for the Hyde 3.62 uh, Eaton M62 on a, an M52B engine. This is my 99 uh, BMW 323i convertible. So it's got a kind of a weird engine alignment on some things. Not everything's going to be the same as other people. I'm going to run into some problems. I seem to find out that a lot of people don't run into. A lot of little weird quirks. This engine seems like it was just kind of thrown together. But, okay, step one, if you've gotten this far, then you're good. Um, if you haven't seen my other video, make sure you take a look at it. It's going to discuss deleting the crankcase ventilation, deleting the secondary air pump from the far side and all of those lines, as well as removing the air box or cold air intake if you have one, deleting the um, ABS, and the traction control throttle body and also eventually relocating the throttle body there's going to be a couple things you're going to have to do you're going to have to cut the wire loom reposition the throttle cables rotate the throttle and um, if you're like me i even deleted the uh, water intakes and outtake off of the throttle the throttle heating uh, circuit i deleted and cut off those nipples to get a little bit of extra clearance that will be helpful that you'll need a um, couple other little things that have been done under here again watch the other videos they'll be in the comments and uh, they're on my on my channel uh, to get this far but if you've got this far you're ready to put the supercharger on kit and bracket and everything from here it's pretty easy and straightforward um, you're going to have your hide motor works kit mine's already been installed and removed i'm uh, repeating the process and redoing the process um, for the new stage two intercooler piping and everything. So I, at this point in time, I have removed everything that I had from stage one. You can also check out my videos on that one if you're just doing the stage one setup um, afterwards to see how you want to pipe it. But so in the, uh, <clears throat> in the instruction manual, it's going to tell you to go ahead and pull your top and bottom alternator bolt. I've already done that. It's going to be this little bolt here and another bolt that you can't see too well. Sorry, but it's going to be back behind this wheel back here. Pretty sure for you can see, yeah, if you look straight down there, you'll, uh, you'll see the other end of it right there rotating. Focus. And I can't get it to focus. Well, there you go. So there's, there's going to be another bolt down there. Pull both of those out and then you're going to replace them with longer bolts and spacers that are going to come in your kit. The bottom bolt is going to be this long boy right here. Make sure you get your washer on there first. Um, long 120, 180 millimeter bolt, sorry, 180 millimeter black bolt. This is going to be your new alternator bottom bolt. And eventually it's going to stick through the bottom of the bolt and it's going to give you a place to mount the, bat the bottom, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to mount the back bracket from the supercharger kit onto this bolt eventually. Now, in the instructions, it's going to say you don't have to remove your alternator. And this may be true for you. I don't know if it's because of the Mishimoto aluminum radiator kit that I'm running or possibly this motor in this bay sits slightly different. But I actually did not have the clearance to get this bolt into. You can see it's, it's really, really long um, getting it into there. You can see I've got about at least an inch. It's say maybe even an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, somewhere in the inch three eighths of extra room that I cannot get, you know, even if I angle it, because this has to go through your supercharger bracket. So this bracket is going to sit like this in your engine bay, slightly crooked. Okay. 
This bottom ear is your bottom radi or bottom alternator hole. That is the top alternator hole. That is going to get a pulley hole, and uh, and that's and that sits around the alternator itself. So you should have removed your belt by now. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Just roll the tensioner and take the belt off. Um, so that way this can pass over the pulley on the alternator to get into place. So what I was saying is is that basically once I am once I have this bracket here, I cannot fish this bolt into this bracket and not run into my radiator. But don't fret, it still works out. What you have to do uh, is actually remove the radiator, or remove the alternator. So if you unperch the alternator, you can actually move it out of the way. And that's gonna allow you to get the bolt into place. And what you'll do is you'll slide the bolt with a washer through your bottom hole, right? So there's your bottom hole, okay? Now from here, you're going to need a 23 millimeter spacer. Get that stuff, hey, hey. So you'll need the 23 millimeter spacer. That's gonna go over your bolt, and that's what's gonna space you off of the alternator properly. So this is what, excuse me, sorry guys. This is what your bottom should look like. You got a washer, the bracket, the spacer, and then the alternator is gonna start here. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to feed this onto the bottom alternator bolt uh, holder here. But once you're started, or once, you know, don't go out the back side of it, but once you can get the bolt into here, you can then reseat the whole situation and you'll be, you'll be fine. So I'll cut to that real quick here um, when I come back. All right, 12 minutes later, don't do what I did. I dropped the spacer into the engine bay and so you can't find it. So uh, what I've done is I've finally gotten that bolt to slide through and we've got the alternator bracket, we've got the bracket on. And so now we can proceed with the top alternator bolt. Okay, so top alternator bolt is gonna require a little bit of special stuff. This is the setup you're gonna be looking for. Sorry guys. So the bracket is gonna be where my fingers are. So you can see inside the pulley, there is a five millimeter spacer in there. Go ahead and get it to come out. There you go. So you have a small spacer there. Okay, that's gonna be inside the pulley with the bolt. You're gonna have a spacer behind the pulley. And then where my fingers are right now is where the bracket's going to be. So you have to assemble this like that with this spacer in between the top alternator and the bracket. It should sit kind of like that. You can see the spacing where it is right now. That's what you want to fill with that washer. Goes in that space. All right. Okay. So now we've got that in in place. You'll start to see the bracket's going to start to line up. And essentially, when you tighten those two down, your bracket is essentially mounted. You'll have one more hole at the top for a pulley that's going to go on that top hole up here. But tighten those down to spec. And that bolt on bottom, the black bolt down here, is going to eventually extend out the bottom of the alternator, out that nut, and it's going to hang out. So you don't want to tighten that down yet completely until you get the back alternator bracket attached. But you're going to have to pass the bolt through that nut uh, and have it exposed, and then you can attach to that bottom alternator bolt your bracket. All right, once you're finished up, it should look like this. You got a pulley here that hopefully rotates and it's not locked in place. It's got a spacer behind it. And let's see if I can creep back there a little bit. And the other spacer you can just barely see at the end there. Let's see if I can highlight it with an arrow for you. Bing, bing. And then down here on the bottom is the bottom bolt down there with the washer. Uh, 23 millimeter spacer behind it. I don't know if I'll be able to show you that. Yeah, there it is. So there is 23 millimeter spacer 
behind the back of the of the uh, plate onto the front of the altar. And then you'll now see that we now have this little guy sticking out of that bolt. That is where you're going to mount your back bracket to. So now you're going to take the back bracket plus a washer and the nut that would have been on the 150 millimeter bolt that you used for the bottom bracket. That nut and washer is going to go in a sandwich along with this bracket off of that bolt down there. So you're going to go bolt, you're going to go bracket on the bolt, washer, and then nut and leave it slightly loose until you get it positioned for the supercharger. Okay, with that on, you should now look a little something like this with your back bracket and your front bracket. And now it's time to actually mount your supercharger into place. You're gonna start off by using two of the 115 millimeter bolts along with a um, 25, two 25 millimeter spacers. So it's gonna look like this spacer washer, right? And then a bolt, essentially, it's gonna look like this with your spacers above these holes here and here. And then your supercharger is going to sit on those spacers. So the supercharger will be in between this washer and that spacer with that washer and that nut on the underside of the bracket. At this time, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and get your dummy plates on. You can see I have now the stage two pulley, the smaller pulley installed. And I have also installed the top inlet dummy and uh, there is a rubber gasket in between there. And then from there, you can install the rear dummy and um, there's, a, there's a plate and a, and a, a takeoff that you can actually see inside there. So there's a plate and an actual tube that I've connected this coupler to. Uh, this coupler is going to then go to the throttle body. So attach both of your plates. Uh, you may have an electromagnetic pulley here or you may have the high 60 millimeter um, pulley. Now be careful in your kit, you're going to notice two of these bolts are the same size and one is just slightly shorter. That's for the back bracket those are for the two fronts with the spacers when you're done should look a little something like this you can see both of them are mounted off we have a spacer here and a spacer down here the nut and bolt are on the other side essentially down through here's what we got and then we will go your final bolt and nut your short one is going to go down through here to catch that bracket that we put up. You can see that it's back there now. All right, once you've got your three bolts tightened down, should look a little something like that. And then your final install is gonna be for the idler pulley on the top corner. For that, you're gonna need a five millimeter spacer, the, uh, I think it's a 25 millimeter bolt M10 that they, that they complete you with, uh, nut washer and a eight millimeter spacer. Again, you're gonna go with the five millimeter spacer inside the pulley with the bolt going through it, an eight millimeter spacer on the back of the pulley between the pulley and the mounting bracket, the supercharger mounting bracket, and then washer and nut on the other side of the bracket. When you're all done, it should look like this. You got an idler pulley that should just barely clear your oil housing. I've got the my metal radiator hose just barely clears too. Uh, pulley just barely clears up front. And then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and reference this is your pulley diagram. Study it carefully. All right guys, so for those of you who upgrade your pulley and go to the Hyde 60 millimeter pulley, it's gonna mean that you also have to change your belt uh, or not use the one that came with the kit. The kit is for the stock pulley. If you change down to the smaller pulley, you need a smaller belt because your tensioner pulley there will hit the belt that's running right next to it right there. You can just see it in the frame here. So that tensioner was swinging up into this belt and making contact. So uh, you had to get a shorter belt to pull the tensioner back farther. After several trips to the hardware store and trying different sizes, this is your guy. Uh, 6PK 2082 
Continental makes it. Um, there are some other variations, but I would say uh, I had to put the tensioner almost at full pull to get this one on. I wouldn't go much smaller than this. Probably a 2080 would work. Uh, and probably all the way up to like a 2090 would work, though I'm not sure. Again, I used the 2082 and it worked great. Um, I tried the 2112 and it was too long. So I would say stick around the 2085 mark, plus or minus maybe 5 millimeters, and you should be okay.